perform uh, our uh, serve, uh, please come forward and pay your time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Are we really serious about what we say? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm sure that we all believe that our God is good all the time. Before this uh, outbreaks of coronavirus pandemic, before the outbreaks of Ebola pandemic, whatever epidemic, before that, <laughs> even after that, even in the midst of it, God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Word of God tells us clearly that, you know, all things work put together for those who are called by his name. I just want to focus that. I think uh, many theologians, many pastors have failed to uh, talk about these things. Now, when the Bible said all things, it means all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to turn the Bible here before uh, we go on and talk about the today's topic, uh, this uh, part six of the topic. I want you to turn and be the Romans. Let's turn to Romans and chapter 8 and verse 28. That talks about Romans chapter 3, verse 28. We need to believe that our God is the God of love. And that God is control of all things. And we work all things together for the good. Amen. Of those who know and love him. But the question is, do you know him and do you love him? So let's hear from a Bible reader, number one, so let's uh, with the Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Now let us see very carefully, amen. But for those who does not know God, who does not love God, I think it's a big, big, a big, uh, a big concern for them, that now is the time to know Him, now is the time to love our God, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm going to turn the Bible to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let's read our first. From the Bible reader, you can read our verse. Romans 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. Praise to the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul is not saying that all things, as uh, he is not saying, and we know that all things work together for everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a big difference between everybody and those who know Him and love Him. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord God says over here, and we know all things work together for those work together for good to them that love God. Number one, it says love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To them that love God. Now many people are saying, I love God, I love Jesus, I belong to Him, He's my Savior, He's my this, He's my that. But the big question is, my friends, are you really loving Jesus Christ? Are you lo really loving God? Because Jesus clearly says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Hallelujah. A lip service is not enough. Giving a lip service, everybody can say. I can say to my, uh, you know, friends, I love you all the time, thank you all the time, I can sing. But the question is, if I truly love you, I have to show, I have to have a practical thing. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. If there's no practical thing, if there's no deeds, and if I simply give a lip service and say, I love you, I love you, it does not make any sense to God as well. And it does not even make sense to you as well, right? And I'm sure that if someone's claiming and say, you know what, I love you. I love you with, you with all my heart and soul. You are my everything. Alright? But, practically if he is not proving that he truly loves you, not being faithful to you, not being honest with you, and cheating on you all the time, and uh, not keeping uh, you know, the rules that you set and that, you know, something that you want him to do, all right? Then it's a, it's a vanity. It's a meaningless love. It's nothing but a lip service. 
That person is saying nothing but he's, uh, he's just sitting on you. So that's the reason why you know, the Bible tells us here that Jesus said in John chapter 14, I want you to turn the Bible, uh, it's time to know that who are the people who truly love God. Amen. Hallelujah. People who truly love God are the people who keep God's commandments. Who continue in the doctrines of Christ. Who does not forsake the assembly of God. Who does not forsake the church. Many, many people are worshiping the pastors, I think. And then the reason is sometimes you see some family comes here in our service. And the next day they don't turn up again. And sometimes they, uh, it seems that they, they worship me, it seems. Because if they truly worship God, if they truly love God, you don't have to please anybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the church of God. Alright, if the pastor doesn't wish you all the day, you know, someday if he doesn't uh, you know, invite you or inform you, that doesn't mean that you should not come the next Sunday. Or if the pastor does not come and uh, you know, visit your family frequently, that doesn't mean you should stop going to the church. If you truly love God, the Bible said, do not forsake the assembly of God. Hallelujah. But many people, they don't do that. When the pastor's family doesn't uh, often uh, frequently call them up, they stop coming. And they don't give any damn about the prayer meeting. They don't give any damn about the whole prayer meeting. There are many people who do that. So this is a big question, my friend. I'm not judging anyone, but are we truly loving Jesus Christ? That's a big question. That is a big question. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Let's turn the Bible first of all to the wrong uh, John chapter uh, 14. It's time to know. Who are the people who truly love Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn the Bible to the John chapter 14. And uh, let us focus here on verse, <coughs> verse uh, 15. Let's hear from the Bible reader. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's say, let's hear one more time what it says. If you, John chapter 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, just continue to say. Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now many people, that's what we say. God is good all the time. God is good. God is good. I love God. I love God. I love Jesus. But in reality, we are not loving Him. Because we don't have any... Amen. Practical thing. We don't keep God's commandment. We are not obeying Him. There's a big difference between just believing or accepting and obeying. Amen. Hallelujah. I have accepted you 10,000 times. I may say, I consider you, I accept you, I believe you, but if I don't hire you, what's the point then? Because you need a job. And if I say, I believe in you, talents, I believe you have a potential. I truly believe you're a great singer. And I truly believe that you are, you have all the potentials. I keep praising you, but if I don't hire you, if I don't provide what you need, that means it's a useless thing. It's a meaningless. Right? Because you are, a, you are applying for a job in the company. And as a CEO, all I'm saying is that you're great. You're fantastic. You're wonderful. You're deserving. You can be a great asset to do towards the company. You have great potentials. No doubt you're great. Your quality is very good. And you can be a, a great a blessing. You can be a great asset to this company. All I'm saying, I'm just placing you over again and again. But I'm not providing you an awful letter. I'm not giving you a job that you need. That means, my friend, it's a useless. It's a meaningless thing. And that is exactly what is happening today in the world that we are living. Many people say, I love Jesus Christ. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, that Jesus is my Savior, that Jesus is my Lord, my King. He is my everything. So we are only giving a lip service, but we are not keeping God's commandment. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are His God's commandment? Number one, His commandment is that we repent. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said in Mark 1 15, repent and believe in the gospel. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
when he can repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and also be baptized, be born of the water and spirit. Because in John 3 5, the Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you truly love Jesus Christ, my friend, the most important thing that God wants in our life is that we must be born again. Hallelujah. Not born again in the flesh. Not with the will, we not will not, uh, not, in, not with the will of man. Not with the will of the flesh of man, but with the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And what is the will of God? It is the born according to the Bible way. To be born spiritually, my friend, to be born of the water and spirit, because that is what Jesus Christ said in Commonwealth. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, because Jesus wants you and I to enter into God's kingdom. He wants to spend, hallelujah, amen. He wants you to spend an eternity with him in heaven forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to give you and I the abundant life, the everlasting life. But we cannot get into heaven. And we cannot get into heaven unless we are born again. So therefore, who are the people who truly love God then? Those who love Him. And according to the Bible, those who love Jesus Christ are the people who keep God's commandment. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let us see what exa some examples of the <clears throat> who are the people who love, who truly love Jesus Christ? If we turn the Bible in Acts chapter 2, we can see these are the people that would truly, truly love Jesus Christ. Because they were, they were not hesitant. They were not even ashamed to acknowledge the name of Jesus Christ. They were not even ashamed to be identified with the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, let's see in Acts chapter 2. Amen, praise the Lord. We're going to come. We're going to start a little bit about. We'll see from the Bible who are the people in who truly love God, who truly love Jesus Christ. And according to Acts chapter 2, these are the people that were not ashamed to be identified with the name of Jesus Christ. You can see that in Acts chapter 2 and verse 30. Alright, in 30. Uh, Seventh. Now when they heard this, they were pricking their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. Amen. There is something that we always need to do, my beloved brothers and sisters. Even if I force you, what's the point? If you don't love Him. Amen. If you don't believe in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. I can force someone to get into baptized because he's scared of me. Or maybe he is, or he wants some favor from me, but if he truly does not believe in Jesus Christ, what's the point? It's a meaningless. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. So let us see that who are the people that who truly love Jesus Christ. These are the people. Man and brethren, what shall we do? In other words, they are asking, man and brethren, what shall we do in order? To be saved. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But today I am sure that even in Saturday service, even in the whole life service, even in the Sunday service, 99.5 of the pastors hate this accent to verse 38. They don't want to read it out. Because they even, you know, if they read it out, they may think, you know, they, they often, uh, you know, think that this is just for the Jesus only Pentecostal churches Bible verse. My question is, my friend, if you think that these words of Scripture is only for those certain churches, that means you are saying that even the apostles, the entire New Testament church, are those... They belong to those certain churches. So let's let's try to you know have a broader sense of mind. Let us try to understand 
Because when you study the Acts of the two, the Bible said, nowhere you will come across Satan, nowhere will you come across the Lucifer, or any other name, because it says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When Pastor Samus is saying that Acts of the two, verse 38, is a Satan's favorite Bible verse. You know what? What is my response to him? I responded to him in an email. And I said, it is not a Satan's favorite Bible verse, but it is Jesus' favorite Bible verse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you look at this Acts of the 30, 38, that is how did the early church, the New Testament church, received a new word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And after that, what happened? Because they simply truly loved in Jesus Christ, therefore, they were not ashamed to be identified with the name Jesus Christ. As a result, what did they do? You can see in verse 42. 41 and 42. Then they that let to receive his word were baptized. That means they were immersed into the water. Amen. Hallelujah. From your human standpoint, you may think that baptism, immersion, is nothing. But in the eyes of God, it's a very big thing. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, the physical circumcision is a very small thing in the eyes of man. But in the eyes of God, whosoever received the physical circumcision were known as the holy people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the people who were not circumcised were known as the Gentiles, 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 or heathen or pagans. Now the same is happening today, my friend. There are two types of group of people. There are people who claim to love Jesus Christ and people who truly love Jesus Christ. And those who truly love Jesus Christ are not ashamed to be identified with the name of Jesus. They do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. They cast out demons in Jesus' name. They pray in Jesus' name. And they, and they do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's what we can see. And also we can see here, the people who truly love Jesus Christ are this. In Acts of the 10, you can see that here. Look at here. Verse 43 on words. To him give all the prophet witness that through his name, who shall believe in himself, the Savior, the Son of Sin. While Peter yet spoke his word, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word. And they of the circumstances of its believers stories. And as many as can be Peter, because then on the Gentile also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when they heard, when, <clears throat> for, they, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, and then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized? Which had received the Holy Ghost as well as, well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they obeyed it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the people who truly love Jesus Christ are the people who are not ashamed to be identified with the name of Jesus. And they are the early church, my friend. And I want to read from, I want to hear from a Bible reader. Let's turn to Acts chapter, <clears throat> listen carefully. In Acts chapter 5, not only they were baptized in Jesus' name, but they do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. They teach and preach in Jesus' name. They magnify and glorify the name of Jesus. They were teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus Christ all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And these are the early church, the church that Jesus Christ built. These are the New Testament church, the apostolic church. Let's read out in Acts chapter 5 and verse 4 to 42. Let's read it one more time from the Bible reader. Acts chapter 5 and verse 4 to 42. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and bidden them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go, 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, 42. And daily in the temple and in every house they said not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So that means... They were not only being baptized in Jesus' name, but they were always teaching and preaching continuously, unceasingly, unceasingly, 
They were always continuing in the name of Jesus Christ. They were continuing, hallelujah, amen, teaching and preaching in Jesus' name. You can see that. So in verse 4 it says, And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles, beaten them, and commanded them they should not speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because there is a power in the name of Jesus Christ. And let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer same for his name. You can see that? So they were not ashamed to be identified, to be identified with the name of Jesus Christ. Because they do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. They teach and preach in Jesus' name, and they baptize in Jesus' name, they pray in Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Even to the extent of rebaptism, they receive the baptism in Jesus' name, and they always teach and preach daily in the temple, in every house, they cease not to teach and preach in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, amen. How you can tell me, Hallelujah, Amen. If you want to know who are the people, who are the group of the people, who are the congregations that who truly love Jesus Christ, then I would say the New Testament Church. Hallelujah, Amen. If you want to see an example, I would say, look, consider them as an example. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. So now coming back to again Romans chapter 8. And Romans chapter 8, let's refocus again in Romans chapter 8. That all things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. In, this, in the second season, we have already explained who is, who is God. Because according to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 6 and 7, nobody can deny that Jesus Christ the one true God. Amen. Because the scripture says that he did overcome and said he read all things. And Jesus said, I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, as we all know, says, In him dwell all the fullness of God in bodily, and ye are complete in him. And to them who are called according to his purpose. Now the people who are called according to his purpose are the people who acknowledge his name and who keep God's commandments. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's turn again to John chapter 1 in order to understand this. In the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Then the people who are, called according, uh, who are called according to his purpose are the people who believe in his name. Who do all things in Jesus' name. And I'm sure that some people are smiling. Some people are just really really. But let me tell you one thing, guys. The day when you will die, you will come to know what I'm talking about. And that is coming very soon. It's unpredictable. So stop smiling and stop ridiculing. Amen. Hallelujah. You better get serious now. It's time to get serious because your life is uncertain. When someone is preaching, you better get serious. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the man who's preaching is the mouthpiece of God. Remember the people of Nedevi? They were serious about what they received, the message from the man of God. Because the message was loud and clear, even though it came out from the mouth of Zorah, but they knew it's not from Zorah, it's the message coming from God. Amen. Hallelujah. So what did they do? They cried out to God, and uh, the whole people in the native city repent of their sins. They repented, and they took a sick load, and cried out to God, and said, Please, spare us, forgive our sins. As a result, what happened? The Nineveh city was spared. But what about the Sodom and Gomorrah? The Sodom and Gomorrah was just ridiculing, really making fun. They don't give any attention, they don't give any damn at all. 
And I'm sure that some of the students or some of the people who are listening to me over, again, over the FBI, and I'm sure that some people may be wondering why is that Dr. Mandi even having all, such a highly qualified person? Why is it like a foolish person and decides it over again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again in baptism in Jesus' name? According to the Bible, my friend, without a baptism in Jesus' name, the truth is you will not get into heaven. That's what the Bible said. Someone asked me, how do you know? I said, why don't you turn the Bible? Let's read from John chapter 3, verse 5. Because that is, the, <clears throat> that is the only way that you can get into heaven. So now, we better get serious now. Because when in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this outbreaking of this global pandemic, <clears throat> we needed three days in the capital city of Delhi, just three days back, According to the sources, that around three lakhs of people were dying just in three days. Let's read John chapter 3 verse 5. John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what the Bible said. That's what Jesus said, my friend. So except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And there are many people who say, you know what, water, that doesn't mean uh, real water. It simply means something else. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Everybody knows, including many Christian commentaries, including Matthew Henry commentaries, the most respected commentaries of all times, and including many theologians, they all understood that John 3 5 contains that waters and spirit and the elements contains and is referring to the baptism into the water. Let's turn the Bible to see examples from the Bible that's not believing some explanations or commentaries. Let's put a thing over here and let's try to understand what the scripture talks about. Let's turn the Bible to John chapter, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 8. Let's find it out. See the examples that the word water is now here always refrained or symbolized or it's indicating the baptism. The immersion of water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's read out from Acts chapter 8, verse 34. Let's hear from our, uh, our Bible reader. 34 to all the way to 38. Let's read it down, please. Acts chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. And the angel answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. 35. Mm -hmm. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the age says, See, here is water, what do hinder me to be baptized? Verse 7. And Philip said, If thou believest with, with all thy heart, thou might. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And he commanded the children to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the you know, and he baptized him. Amen. Hallelujah. That is a perfect example, my friend. So what did they do? So why did they went down into the water? To, to swim? To take birth? No, my friend. To be baptized. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So therefore, a eunuch said what? The Ethiopian eunuch said, See, here is water. What do hinder me to be baptized? Amen. Hallelujah. Then Philip said, if you don't believe it with all your heart, you can't receive the baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But many evangelists and pastors say, all we need to do is just believe and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that He died on the Calvary for you. He died on the, on the cross, fall on your behalf. So the moment when you pray and accept, you already say, wrong, my friend. Amen. According to the Bible, it is 1,000% wrong. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If the, if the unit, amen, was already saved by merely accepting that Jesus died on the cross, on the Calvary, on his behalf, then why would he need to be baptized there? Why would the 3,000 souls on the earth, the Pentecost must be <coughs> required to receive the baptism? And what about the Apostle Paul then? <coughs> because when you study the Acts of the 22, let's hear again from my sister, from our Bible uh, reader. In Acts chapter 22 and verse 15 and 16, because of my hardest work, sometimes people don't like me. But my friend, I'm not hurt towards you. We have a great love for you. But all that I'm saying is I'm just motivating, exhorting you to believe in the Bible rather than believing in man made denomination, tradition, because it's a matter of life and death. Once your life will come to an end, my friend, even if you regret it, cries me all the time, it's over. You don't have a second chance. Well, if you don't know how to, uh, if you don't know how to write the exams, maybe you can write it again. Even if you fail in your 10 plus, uh, 10 plus 2 examination, you can reappear again. But once this line will come to an end, there is no real second sense. <coughs> and because of that, don't risk it. Don't just rely on man-made doctrines. Just rely on the living word of God. Amen. See, was the apostle Paul a foolish person? If Jesus Christ died on the Calvary, and by merely accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if his sins can be forgiven, directly if you can get into heaven and if you can receive the new birth, why would Apostle Paul need to undergo the, <coughs> need to undergo the baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins? Let's read the Bible in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 and 17. Sorry, let's read uh, 15 and 16, that would be great. Acts chapter 22, verse 15 and 16. For thou hast made his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. 16. And now, why hearest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wipe away the sin, calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, remember that this man had even heard the words of Jesus when he went to war at Damascus. But none of you have ever heard the words of Jesus Christ calling you from heaven saying, Pay no, he pay no. Have you heard it like that? Never, isn't it? But still, after reading uh, X or maybe uh, first or second zone, the Bible counselor will come and ask you, have you have you uh, had the conviction in your heart that you are a sinner? And the moment when they say yes, oh my God, then we need to acknowledge him as a Lord and Savior. Pray with me. Say, see the prayer of salvation. Follow me. For example, when Lord start saying, Lord, follow. Me. Lord, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. And I know that I sin against you. See? I know, I, I, and I know that I sin against you. I know that I sin against you. Now I return of my sins. Now I repent of my sins. And I, I accept you as my savior. I accept, I I accept, accept you now. I accept you now. As my Lord and Savior. And my Come into my life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. Say born again. <laughs> <laughs> the moment when you say those lines. The American pastors and many, many, many so-called man-made denominational preachers and theologians say, you're already born again. My friend, that is nothing but deceiving. Don't be deceived. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because it's, it's a matter of life and death. So don't risk your life. Because life is just want. So why are you relying on the man-made doctrines? And stake your eternal life forever. Because once you die physically, you don't have a second chance. According to the Bible, there is no reincarnation. Please remember that. 
Life is only once. You do once, you have only once life, and make use of it. And be wise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that's the reason why the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ tells us very clearly a foolish man build his house on the same, but a wise man build his house on the wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible said, Christ was the rock, my friend. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the reason why the man who heard the voice of Jesus Christ when he went to work the Moscow, he had a one-to-one -one conversation with Jesus, but yet he was not insane, yet he was not born again. So in order for him to be born again, in order for him to be saved, Ananias came unto him and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. Immediately, he began to see. Amen. Hallelujah. And he preached unto him about Jesus. And after that, Hallelujah. Ananias said unto him, Brother Saul, what are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. Ananias did not say, your sins are already forgiven when Christ died on the Calvary. So therefore, all you need to do is believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your saved. He didn't say that. Instead, Adonis said to him, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the name of God, my friend. Therefore, last thing. I would like to encourage my blood brothers and sisters. When you are unable to preach in needed of seasons, I'm sure that you will be crying out. I'm sure that you will pray in the name of Jesus I will get saved. Let the pastor pray for me. I receive many, 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 many of prayer requests over again and again. And none of you have any problem that I pray for them in Jesus' name. And we did pray for them in Jesus' name. Whether they come become our members, whether they support the ABTS or not, it doesn't matter. Whether they come and attend our fellowship church or not, it doesn't matter. Whether they uh, praise me or not, it doesn't matter. Even if they gossip me, backbite me all the time, it doesn't matter. Still, I will pray for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want the people to get saved physically first. But I want to want to, my friend, exhort you and challenge you here is. Why is that you want to receive the truth only when, when you don't have the next day, when it comes in the last stage? Because in the last stage, it's too late, my friend. So don't be arrogant and don't be so, uh, you know, reluctant. Because in the last stage, it's not a good time. Because many people weep and they used to wear and cry out and they're willing to do anything in Jesus' name and they're willing to obey and keep God's commandment at the last days. When we talk about the church history, even Constantine received the baptism, even though it was not a baptism in Jesus' name, it was the baptism of the Father, the Holy Spirit, strictly baptism, he refused the baptism for the rest of the whole of his life but he received the baptism at just before one hour of his death. A sprinkler baptism. At that time he agreed to receive the baptism. But it was too late for friend. Why is that we are always waiting for the last days? So dear brothers and sisters, let's not do that. And finally, let's close it with Romans 8, 28. Whether this Bible belongs to you or not, I don't know. Who am I to judge you? I'm not judging anybody. All I'm saying is that according to the Bible, the early church, in order to be saved, they repent and they were baptized and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why Jesus said in John 3 5, Very little I see on thee, except a man is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And before he ascends to that our Lord Jesus Christ was the same in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 and 16. He did believe it and baptized shall be saved, and he did not believe shall be condemned. But the denomination walls are saying they overturned it 
The words of Jesus Christ, they twist of God's word. The words of Jesus, they said, He that believe and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior will be saved. So the baptism that is, that is already ignored is already put on the dustbin. But Jesus Christ said something different. Amen. So for the conclusion, I want our Bible reader to read out once again Mark chapter 16 and verse 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe and not shall be them. So what it says? He that believe and ignore Jesus as an anointed Savior. It says, He that believe and baptize shall be what? Not safe or safe? Safe. Hallelujah. Amen. My beloved brothers and sisters, before it is too late, let us keep God's commandment. Save yourself and save your household. And save the people around you. Hallelujah. Amen. But most importantly, not in physical means, what we need is a spiritual salvation. God bless you all. And finally, somebody has just uh, asked me these questions. Why is that ABTS often have the whole night prayer meeting? And I just sent him a Bible verse. And the Bible verse is very interesting because it says in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Amen. And also in Genesis chapter 22, verse 24, then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until morning, or until daybreak. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can see from the Bible that even our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was here on this earth, he went to the mountains, he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. So you may be asking that if Jesus got while he was praying. Now remember, as a man he was praying, and as God, he answers our prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. He has set us an example that we must follow. That even Jesus Christ practiced a whole night prayer. And therefore today, we are spending our time in a whole night prayer instead of watching Hollywood movies or Chinese movies. Or instead of spending our time in watching a Korean movies. And I'm sure that many of Delhi Heights, many people in Delhi, especially from Northeast India, most of our people, they have no problem till 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Even after 5 a.m., 6 a.m., they're still watching Korean movies. They're still laughing, and they will order pizzas from Zometo or Swaggies. Sometimes you will see the <coughs> the Zometo delivered boy is still coming, you know, even at 6 a.m. And these are our people, what they're doing is, they didn't do anything in that night time. All they're doing is laughing. Watching the Hollywood movies, Chinese movies, Jackie Chan movies, uh, Bruce Lee movies, and laughing all the time. And in the morning time, they would order uh, tomatoes, and the little boys would come and they would eat, and then they would sleep. They're not even praying. But today, as an Abidus family, Hallelujah, Amen. The reason why we are here having this whole night service, the reason why we have spent the whole night, is only to pray and pray and pray for this country. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir, for sharing your message in front of you. Now it's time for sharing testimony with Teddy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now it's time for prayer. Uh, if you have a prayer, I request that you have to share. Uh, you can share the prayer to us. I just want to step back and say Okay guys, uh, let's put the watch please. <coughs> Hallelujah, Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone please get me this mobile uh, Hallelujah, Amen. I don't know why we don't have the testimonies. Uh, maybe we are a little bit hesitant or maybe we are not in the mood or something, I don't know. 
But I want to embrace you not as my students or as a church members, but as a brother in Christ. As my brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to embrace you. The difference between the Indians, especially the tribal people, and the Korean churches, the Japanese churches, or many uh, developed countries in the in the Western and in the Western countries is that whenever a conductor said we have a testimonies, they always have a testimonies to share. Amen. Hallelujah. And if there is no testimony, my friend, that you're not living a life for Jesus, that means your life is totally dull. You are living a death, a spiritually dead life. You're not living for Jesus Christ. Maybe you're just a ritual leader, you're worshiping God, and you don't have any testimonies. There is always a testimony we can share how God has answered our prayer. When you don't have a testimony, that means you're saying, God has never answered my prayer, He never saw my problem. Or He has never healed me. And if that is true, then I don't know that how come that most of you are sick. And God has restored your life and you're able to attend the church, you're able to attend your classes, I don't know. So why is that we don't have testimony? But it's a shame on us, to be very honest. It's a shame on you when you don't have a testimony to share. When you don't have a testimony, that means you're saying that I don't really care about my relationship with Christ, my personal relationship with Christ, it doesn't really matter. That's what you're saying. So even for the conductor also, if testimonies is not there, please don't add it anymore. Brother uh, Lenu, stop adding testimonies, sharing because there is no, yeah, stop, yeah. 